Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Jacqueline Dorsey of Lean Frontiers and I'll serve as your host today. I'm excited to bring to you today a short webinar on the improvement in coaching kata facilitated by both Brandon Brown and Dan McCarthy. We will set aside some time for a Q&A session, so if you have any questions, please submit them using the toolbar, toolbar and I'll field those questions towards the end. So for now, let me turn things over to them. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the Alaskill Camp uh, that we are hosting with our host company, Solidscape, uh, with Dan McCarthy. Good morning, everybody. And my name is Brandon Brown with the W3 Group. I am an associate and consultant uh, with the W3 Group of a little over 20 years of lean and practitioner experience. I have a professional engineering license, spent many years in operations management and uh, uh, working in manufacturing and, and continuous improvement. I'm a master kata coach with the W3 Group. We work very closely with Mike Rother, the author of the book Toyota Kata. I'm also a professor at the University of Arkansas, uh, Master of Science in Operations Management program, uh, where I teach their uh, adjunct part-time, and I'm a lifelong learner, as you can see from the photograph there. I uh, always learn from uh, each deployment and each uh, manufacturing experience that I, I get a chance to be a part of. And I'll let Dan introduce himself, Dan from Solidscape in Merrimack, New Hampshire. Good morning once again, everybody. I'm the Vice President of Operations here at Solidscape. We're a 21-year-old uh, manufacturer and designer of 3D printing equipment. I also serve as the Executive Vice President for the Boston Chapter of Apex, which is a learning organization in the field of operations management. And my prior experience includes time traveling Europe as the Director of Global Operations for Trade Wings, a reseller in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and also experience as the Vice President of Operations for Laminated Plastics. All right. Thanks, Dan. So what Dan has agreed to in his company, Stolidscape, a uh, Stratasys company located in Merrimack, New Hampshire, is to become a host site for a Kata Skill Camp June the 3rd, 4th, and 5th, 2015. And we're going to go into a little bit more information about what that's all about and what you would expect to see uh, if you chose to attend that particular uh, solid uh, uh, Kata Skill Camp. And also, just a reminder, if you're attending this webinar uh, and you decide to register, if you enter the code WEBINAR, you'll receive a $100 discount uh, off the price of registration uh, for the Kata Skill Camp. So our purpose here today is to share information about the Kata Skill Camp and also share information about the host site, which is Solidscape, as Dan mentioned, a, a world leader in 3D printing uh, products. So what we're not going to cover, uh, there's been some other webinars regarding the improvement kata and coaching kata that go into more detail. There are two webinars that are posted on the W3 group and Lean Frontier websites that go into much more detail on course content. There are a couple of specific ones, one uh, related to kata and HR. Uh, you can go to the link there that's on the page or go to the W3 group LLC.com. Uh, click on presentations and you'll find Toyota Kata and Human Resources as a link. There's also a previously recorded webinar uh, on the link between Toyota Kata and uh, TWI that uh, Oscar Roche and Beth Carrington conducted uh, a few months back. And you can go there as well. Click on that link or you can go uh, directly to the W3 Group website and you'll see the TWI Kata Connection uh, webinar link. What we are going to cover uh, about the Kata Skill Camp is really six points. The first being, what is a Kata? So many of you that are listening out there may or may not have heard the term Kata. Some of you may have read the book. Some of you may be practicing. So we want to make sure that we get a common base for everyone uh, that is on, online and on attendance here. Then we're going to cover the teaching approach, the methods that W3 Group uses to deploy the improvement Kata using a Kata Skill Camp methodology the learning objectives then uh, from the Kata Skill Camp. We'll cover some of the agenda and the course structure, what you would expect uh, if you attend there in uh, Merrimack, and then who should attend, who should be the ones that are in attendance of this and will gain the most benefit from it. Uh, 
And then Dan will wrap us up with some host site information uh, about SolidScape. So what is CADA? Well, the CADA is a uh, uh, process that was studied first by my author uh, through several years, I think five to six years of studying Toyota and five other Toyota companies uh, about the practices and methodologies they are using the unseen portion of lean uh, that you don't see if you go on a Toyota tour uh, within one of their plants. And what he came out with, the two basic routines were the improvement kata and the coaching kata. And he found that while Western manufacturers have a tendency to struggle a little bit with sustainment of lean, uh, Toyota and their suppliers understand how to manage people for improvement, adaptiveness, and superior results. And so he wrote this book in uh, uh, as a sequel almost to his first book with John Shook, Learning to See, the Value Strip Mapping Book. And uh, since then, the W3 group has uh, worked extensively with Mike uh, since 2009, deploying the improvement kata, practicing, learning from that. Uh, there's a whole community uh, of kata practitioners around the world that are starting to embrace this methodology for managing people for improvement, adaptiveness, and superior results. So at its basics, what, what is a kata? What does that term mean? If you're familiar with martial arts, a kata is really a routine that you practice so it becomes a habit. In martial arts, uh, in uh, the martial art of karate, I'm told there are 26 kata that you learn, 26 forms of kicks, blocks, punches, routines that you practice over and over. And as you test uh, above certain belts, you get certain color belts as you advance and master certain uh, certain routines and habits that are in with a kata. It's very similar to the way we would learn a sport, like on the right-hand side here, learning to play golf, um, learning to play a musical instrument. Uh, you don't just start out knowing how to play an entire song, being able to be a, a scratch golfer. There are five real uh, important ingredients to learn in acquiring any skill, uh, to become a master at being able to perform that skill. The first is the challenge uh, to become uh, better or improve to a desired state. Once that's identified, you need a structured routine, a way of practicing. And beginners need to stay very close to the cot, very close to the structured routine and deviate from it. So they can learn the habits and the mindsets that they need for scientific thinking in order to EDCA through the dimming cycle as, as we've been taught for many years to overcome obstacles. No kata is not enough. We then like want companies to proceed on to practicing daily. Uh, if you don't practice something daily, it, it won't become a habit and it won't become second nature. And then the adaptiveness and the innovative nature uh, doesn't come to fruition. So we encourage you to practice it daily and also get coached feedback, specific coach feedback from someone who has practiced the routines, worked in the environment, and can give you course correction needed. And then over time, as you've mastered overcoming obstacles and you become a coach yourself, you begin to uh, become a master at being able to uh, acquire that, that skill and teach that, that skill to others. So when it comes to uh, the Toyota Kata, the Improvement Kata, and the Coaching Kata, the two routines that we talk about are routines of the Improvement Kata in which the learner primarily is going through the forces as outlined in, in and on Mike's handbook, understanding the direction, first of all, or between the uh, direction of, that the corporation is, is heading and what that means specific like process owners and, uh, and processes uh, within the site. Uh, the next step is grasping the current condition, understanding fully what's going on with the current state, usually through the value stream map current state, and then also using the future state value stream map to establish that next target condition. And all along these routines, as you can see from the slide there, the coach is in an instructing, he's guiding the learner uh, along the process to make sure that they're following the steps appropriately. And each step is really iterative as well as recursive. In other words, things you learn along the way of understanding the direction and grasping the current condition, you can go back and find more about the process as you can do it. Then the next part is the coaching kata. This is where active coaching between a, 
uh, evident coach and a learner begin to do the daily PDCA cycles specifically around only those obstacles that are keeping us from reaching our desired target condition. And so the coach moves into this active coaching with what we call the five Toyota Kata that Mike Rother came, uh, came up with after years and years of research. So where are we at as far as skill development, where you might be somewhere on our roadmap for IK or improvement out of skill development, is maybe in the awareness mode. Maybe you have uh, read, a, read the book, maybe you've read an article, uh, you've gone online and looked at materials. Uh, Mike has an online website that you can go to, uh, W3 group. We have a, uh, a YouTube channel, a TK LinkedIn group as well. Lots of information on our website. And you become more and more familiar just through seminars, attending. We call that kind of self-service passive learning. What we're asking now is for you to take a step into the actual awareness and practicing portion, which we offer several different methods of doing that, one being the Kata Skill Camp, which is a three-day camp. And it's a course where we will actively have coach practice and instructional material at the same time. Once past that, the most important day after a three-day training is what you do on day four, where you go from there, your active support, uh, where you go back to your location, the frequent daily practice that you do, that's where you really start to skill build and develop skills and habits toward the improvement kata, coaching kata. So the teaching approach here is really to have an experiential learning opportunity. We don't use a simulation uh, in our kata camps at all. We rather use real processes uh, that our host site, Solidscape, is providing for us. And we do what we call chunk teaching with immediate practice. In other words, we take a section of one of the four steps of the improvement kata, maybe it's understanding the direction, and we teach a little material and then we go and actually do. Uh, we'll come back and we will learn a little bit more about grasping the current condition and process process and then we'll go to the process that we're working on and actually immediately practice that. We'll also do some role playing with uh, master coaches providing feedback and guidance and then the successive days we will practice, practice, practice and rotate as many learners and new coaches as we can through the process uh, of the improvement kata and coaching kata. So that's, that's our teaching approach as opposed to it being all classroom or all on the floor type training. It's a, it's a combination and a good mix. So to understand really how we teach this role, uh, you need to understand the, the uh, roles uh, actually that people are put in place once the deployment gets started. The learner uh, has a set of process owners that own the process. They're adding value to the product. And the learner usually has some responsibility for the target condition and owns the storyboard in the target condition and works to try and achieve that particular target condition. The learner has a dialogue back and forth with the process owners while he's being coached periodically by the first coach, the person right outside the circle. And once they have established the target condition and they know the direction which they're going over the next week or two weeks, there'll be the daily coaching cycles of the five questions. A third person, a second coach, stands outside and participates periodically and observes the coach. This person is observing uh, how the coach is uh, getting into the mindset of the learner and coaching the learner to think scientifically, and mathematically, and problem solve in a way that's prescribed by the improvement kata. Um, many times if we don't get feedback as a coach, we don't know where we may have misunderstood uh, uh, communication between the learner and ourselves. We need someone else to be able to give us that feedback and keep us, keep us uh, headed in the right direction. So here's a, a richer uh, within our Kyle camp of, of uh, what goes on. We have uh, the learner there. You see is about to point to the storyboard. There's information and data that's been gathered during the current condition. Uh, the coach there has the five protocol questions uh, and is listening intently at what the, what the learner is stating about the particular uh, process and then the second coach is standing back taking notes and notice he's paying particular attention to the coach and how the coach reacts to what the learner says. And so this is the triad of the coach, second coach, and learner 
relationship that we teach. So the next step that we're going to go through is the Kata Skill Camp learning objectives. We want to understand the power and the purpose of deliberate practice and developing this mindset. That's one of our main objectives. We also want to appreciate the link between mindset and culture. Uh, in order to be able to move the culture in the direction which we want to uh, move it, uh, we first have to change, start to work on the mindset. And the only way we can work on mindset is if we start to work on the behaviors and the practice routines that people do on a daily basis. If we don't affect culture directly, and it's not something that, that you turn immediately and go 180 degrees about face, uh, it's a, a process over time. And so if we can start to get into the mindset and think more scientifically to problem solve and do behaviors such as the improvement kind of routine, we can start to move culture towards the statement of continuous improvement. We want to be able to accomplish grasping relationship between scientific methodology and innovation. Many of these obstacles, when we start to work toward them, are going to be difficult, actual real world uh, uh, issues that are faced there at SolidScape, and we'll have to use true scientific so problem-solving methodologies innovation, to try and overcome these obstacles. So you'll get to experience that. It won't be on a simulation or on a game or anything like uh, like that. It's live uh, production processes that Dan and his group are opening up to us. And then we'll be spending time practicing, practicing, practicing these routines so that under the guidance of a master coach so that you become familiar and comfortable with the five question coaching dialogue and the PDCA action and truly understand the engagement for the PDCA cycles. And hopefully we'll prepare participants to effectively practice all the roles in their environment to build new skills as they return back to their workplace. So the structure uh, of the uh, Cotta Skill Camp is we have outside participants that register, and they are split amongst teams of five uh, that look at five host site processes that Dan and his team have already picked out. So we'll have a host site uh, participant on each one of those five teams, and you'd be paired with one of those teams as a participant uh, on that uh, Improvement Cotta team. Solid says subject matters experts are actively involved in assistance from uh, other people that are outside of the uh, SolidScape uh, team themselves, whether it be maintenance or someone that uh, is a safety expert or something will be able to tap on to, into their knowledge base and make sure that we're operating safely and correctly. Um, and then the college skill camp itself is structured really to minimize classroom time and maximize the practice, the process, and at the storyboards because that's where the learning really happens and truly happens and the, the penny drops, so to speak, as, um, as Mike says in his book. We are there, W3, as master coaches and instructors, and we're assigned to a maximum of three teams to guide the activity in the classroom and the process. Uh, so myself and probably Beth Carrington will be the uh, instructors and coaches for this particular skill camp. Uh, this is a picture of some of our team members. Uh, Beth and I are in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, of, the, uh, of the montage there, and our W3 group is dedicated to developing and delivering high-impact, skill-based training on all aspects of Toyota Kata and Lean. Well, the agenda for day by day, what you could expect uh, once you arrive, is uh, day one we're going to be reviewing the theory uh, of the uh, uh, Kata methodologies, uh, the four steps that I mentioned, understanding the direction, We'll review SolidScape's organizational vision and review and set value stream process challenges. Uh, we will then begin to grasp the current condition by breaking up into teams and going through a little bit of process analysis introduction in the classroom, some of that chunked learning, and then go actually to the process area and practice that process analysis. By day two, we hopefully have uh, grasped that current condition and we are working toward establishing the next target condition. Uh, we'll be uh, doing some intro to target condition as far as lecture material. Uh, we'll develop a first target condition uh, amongst the team, and we'll present and discuss target conditions in the classroom uh, once we've developed uh, that first uh, achieved by date. 
Uh, in the afternoon of day two, that we then proceed toward doing PDCA cycles, the dimming cycles of uh, Pendu Check Act and learning how to overcome the obstacles that are keeping us from reaching our target condition. We'll do a little classroom intro into PDCAs and then teams present and define really their first experiment, their first step they would like to take. Uh, beginning of day three, we will then actually go into the act of coaching. We'll do a little bit of material and introduction to coaching cycles, introducing the five <laughs> questions and the coaching methodology. And then we'll actually go to start practicing these. And we'll rotate into roles of learner, coach, and second coach, with W3 group being master coaches to help you perform the PDCAs and the coaching cycles on the processes themselves. We'll do as many iterations as we can and then wrap up mid-afternoon with a deploy at your organization and next steps. Um, we've learned uh, several uh, lessons and best practices from around the world on how to deploy and particularly our, the methodologies we've been using with advanced groups and uh, getting the site leadership going and energized uh, as, a, as a very valuable first step. We'll close and have some group reflection on, on the three days. So who should attend? Well, any company that's interested in beginning the process of learning and applying the improvement coaching Cotter routines would definitely uh, be uh, considered to be in attendance. We're really looking for leaders, managers, business owners, and those process leaders who want firsthand practice using uh, the tools and the routines of the improvement kata and the coaching kata. This is a, a method of changing, as I mentioned, culture, changing mindset, and affecting behavior through practiced, deliberate practice routines. And, and we feel like leadership and managers need to start uh, with that, that level in the organization. And those seeking to a practical hands-on understanding of Toyota Kata really as a holistic system for developing that culture of continuous improvement. So here are some comments just from uh, uh, other participants, their key takeaways, what they liked about the Kata Skill Camp. Uh, they really enjoyed the practice coaching cycles, getting to go through the five questions on real processes, not just classroom-related exercises, uh, learning how to problem solve on real problems and real processes better customer experience by the teams uh, and interacting with team members, getting different vantage points uh, from them, uh, and how to find a better way, uh, how to find a better way to overcome an obstacle that may have been there for many, many months, and a new set of eyes and a, and a new method has allowed uh, companies to overcome and find a better way. Uh, they really like practice and getting immediate expert feedback, so at each successive coaching cycle. Once we do the five questions, we've completed a PDCA step, we're ready to propose the next step. We do an immediate feedback from a master coach situation and give corrective feedback to the coach and to the learner on things we want them to work on a little bit better next time uh, so that they're constantly getting feedback and improvement to improve their methods and understand in a deeper sense what the coaching kata is all about. Also, with the many PDCA cycles, it's easier to look at failures as learnings. Um, many corporations, it's, there's a fear, fear of failure uh, many times, and that's one thing that we're trying to drive out with this process is that we know in order to experiment, not all experiments are going to lead to uh, an improvement. Uh, we have to experiment in PDCA and learn from uh, failures in order to develop a better plan uh, for the next iteration. It's a scientific method of iteration as, as a learning method. And it's a methodology for improving every day, translating to better customer experience. As we do this day in and day out, there's never a focus away from it. We maintain it every day as a method of sustainment. And also, biggest one of the biggest feedbacks is the practice on the actual processes. Maybe a process different than what they do, but they most companies tell us that they can relate it uh, rather than a classroom type of a environment. So what we've covered today is uh, about a Kata skill camp. What is Kata, first of all, in its basic form, our teaching approach, and the learning objectives that we try to achieve through the Kata skill camp methodology, uh, our agenda and course structure for the three days of the camp, 
and who we feel should be in attendance of this and will benefit most from it. So now I'd like to turn it over to Dan for some interesting information on how Solidscape is changing the world of manufacturing. Thank you, Brandon. Okay, welcome to Solidscape in a virtual world. And uh, we're located just north of Boston, Massachusetts. And I promised Brandon the snow will be gone by June. I'm looking out at our parking lot here. We still have a bit of snow up here. We had a record uh, snowfall this past winter. So a little history about uh, Solidscape. We were founded by Royden Sanders 21 years ago. He was an inventor, and he was tired of waiting for his rapid prototypes. So he said there's a better way. So rather than doing some tractor manufacturing, he took some of the technology that was around for additive manufacturing and created the first Solidscape printer 21 years ago. So we do have a mission, as stated here. Uh, we are the world's best at delivering and making high-precision 3D printers, software, and materials. And our goal is to make precision easy by changing the way parts are made with just one click, one industry at a time. For now, we've been focused uh, almost exclusively on jewelry, where we have a dominant position. Any fine jewelry made in the world today most likely was printed on a solid-scape printer or the wax mold. Because of our reputation there, we're also, we're also now known in medical research with Arizona State University, and we're making inroads into industrial applications where parts need to be made in a very precise manner. So let's take a look at the way parts have been made in manufacturing. Uh, 4,000 years ago, people would sketch something out in the stand, then they moved up to drawing things on paper. And what we've taken is the lost wax investment casting process, which has been the same way for 4,000 years. We've taken the first two steps in this process as seen in this slide, we brought them into the 21st century. The post-processing, the slides where it's cast and finished, that's also remain unchanged, and those will be the next uh, iterations of solid-scape printers to try and make those two steps easier. What's changed in the last 30 years is that people have been using computer-aided design tools, CAD tools such as SolidWorks. Our machine very gracefully takes these files in, and then we interpret them, and then we start printing the 3D model one layer at a time. If you've got a wedding band or other ring on your hand, uh, the average wedding ring, it would take three million drops of wax that we uh, print out on our printer to make that wedding ring. We're putting down 5,000 drops per inch to give you an idea of the precision we've got. Okay, next slide, please. Brandon? Uh, yes, that's the next slide. Okay. Yeah, next, next slide, please. Okay, so we look at the advantages. Uh, where, does 3D where does 3D printers make a difference compared to traditional manufacturing? As people get more creative, they can create more complex parts. In a traditional machine shop, you may have difficulty creating uh, blind holes and buried, uh, buried undercuts. So 3D printing, you can do that. When you look at tooling costs, right now if you have to cut things out of steel, you need to wait a long time. When we look at other industries we're looking at, such as electronic components, if you're not trapped in traditional 2D way of thinking when you're designing parts, you can design it in 3D and we can help you print that. When it comes to consumer products, uh, rapid prototyping, we have an engineer here, Mark McGee, he can't imagine working in any other design environment without having the ability to walk down the hall, load his file onto a machine, print it out, and have a part in his hand within eight hours. That really cuts down the time to market and the time to money. And the next slide, Brandon. Should be coming up there for you on the jewelry slide. Yeah, I see it. Uh, 
Recently, we've partnered with a, a very famous designer called Jenny Wu, and in her past, she was restricted by the kinds of designs that she could uh, have printed and have people wearing on their fingers. So our parent company, the first Mercy on the left-hand side there, that was done on a Stratasys printer, and the one on the right, it's the Flying Butterfly, that would be very difficult to get this kind of design uh, on your finger without using 3D printing. It would take a long time and you would not have the precision we are known for. And next slide, please. Next slide, Brandon. Okay. Uh, should be coming up. Uh, another area where Solscape has been able to make some contributions is in the biomedical area. Uh, all of us, uh, we've got, we're, all of our bodies are unique, so when it comes to prosthetics, uh, you want something that fits exactly. You don't want to compromise on, on any, any place where you need to uh, have a body part replaced. So also in pre-surgical planning, we've done, as I said, work with Arizona State University. So before uh, a patient goes under operation, the doctors can now print a model of the area of the body where they'll be working, and they get that practice uh, outside of the body before, before the operational procedure. And we've done some, uh, made some very good contributions with Dr. Frakes out at Arizona State University on aneurysm research. Uh, they can now predict what's happening uh, before somebody suffers a catastrophic event with the tools they've been able to create on our 3D printers. So let's take a look at our shop floor. Uh, we have a desktop 3D printer. It weighs 85 pounds. There's over 400 unique parts that go into every printer. A total of 1,600 pieces have to come together with the right toil setting, the right sequence for this machine to deliver that level of uh, precision. What makes the system work uh, in a good way is the software. So it's very complex. We need to handle all those incoming designs. We need to control the motors, the encoders, the circuit cards. All the parts of the machine have to work in concert. We streamline the graphical user interface so our machines are easy to use. You load the file, you follow the simple instructions on the, on the in input screen, and you start your job. As I said earlier, the chemicals that we use in our machines also have to behave. To get 5,000 drops of anything to behave inside of one inch, it takes a high degree of precision and control. Next slide, please. So the five areas that we've chosen to have the CADA improvement process, in our hardware area, we've got a very uh, key part of the machine, the chassis assembly, that controls the X and the Y motion. It takes about an hour and a half to make this part of the assembly. That, machine, that part of the machine is then delivered with the reservoirs where the chemicals are melted. So that needs to be assembled, tested, and integrated onto the chassis. What melts our chemicals is our proprietary heated lines. So it takes about an hour to make each one of those. We need to prepare the materials, assemble them, and go through a quality assurance step to make sure that the chemicals will flow into the designated area. We've got two chemical labs here, so part of the Carter Skill Camp will be looking at both of those. The model material, that's the output from our machine, uh, that needs to be mixed and has to go through pre-production and some testing. The support material, it's uh, designed to be melted away in post-processing. That has its own separate lab, and we'll be looking at the Carter Skill Camp in there to look at the process steps as to how to make that improved. And now I'll turn it back over to Brandon. Looking forward to seeing you here in Merrimack, New Hampshire in early June. Thank you, Dan. And so uh, it's a very interesting process that's going on there. I'm very excited to uh, get to New Hampshire and, and look at how they make 3D printers and how SolidScape is changing uh, really the world of, of manufacturing with, that, with, the, uh, with these processes. So where would you go after this? Um, well, as I mentioned, the uh, most important day of any particular training is the day after where you would want to go with it. 
would be uh, uh, to put it into active practice. Uh, we offer advanced group uh, five-day in-house kickoffs as well as master coaching support, remote coaching. Uh, but really the, uh, the learning happens when you have frequent daily coach practice at your specific location uh, in, a, in uh, a way of deliberately scientifically thinking and acting and managing on, on your own. If you want to learn more about uh, Improvement Kata, Coaching Kata, as well as some of the other offerings we have with other Kata skill camps, you can go to our websites, uh, www.w3groupllc.com, leanfrontiers.com as well. Uh, has several of our uh, registrations open for skill camps. Uh, and then also we uh, are partners with Mike Rother at the annual Kata Summit. So just a reminder, Merrimack, New Hampshire, Cotta Skill Camp uh, is the host site there is Solidscape, June 3rd, 4th, and 5th. And at the time of registration, if you'll enter webinar, you receive a $100 discount on that uh, particular registration. So Jacqueline, Jacqueline back, back to, you. to you. All right. Well, thank you, Brandon and Dan. Um, I'm taking a look, and it doesn't look like we've had any questions during this time. So if anybody has some, feel free to reach out to us after this webinar ends so we can answer those for you. So again, I wanted to thank uh, Brandon and Dan for facilitating our session. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned this pre previously, but today's webinar is being recorded. So look for an email following our time together for a link to the recording. And feel free to share this throughout your organization. So again, thank you, Brandon and Dan, and thanks to each of you for participating in today's session. Goodbye. Thanks, Jacqueline. Thanks, thanks, thanks Dan. Dan.